Thanks. I'm going to spend some of my time thanking the organisers. This is our first time sponsoring PyCon UK, and we've been made to feel very, very welcome, so thank you. Uh, we build Anvil.Works. It's a tool for building full-stack web apps with nothing but Python, and we did this because we thought think we could make a better developer experience using pure Python than using the traditional tools. And auto-completion is part of that. Having a proper code completion gives you discoverability. It lets you explore the APIs, uh, without having to tab to the documentation every moment. It gives you speed because you go a lot faster when you can hit the tab key every few characters. It gives you confidence that what you're doing is right because there are whole classes of bugs you can just fix without even hitting the run button. And it just feels good to use. Uh, now, for a, we started out thinking we could make a good developer experience without autocomplete. I'm here to tell you that we were wrong. Uh, if you don't use autocomplete yourself, you might not know what you're missing. I really encourage you to try it out. Even if you spend all your days in a terminal with Vim or Emacs, you can get Jedi as a plug-in. Really, just try it for a week, see what happens, you'll be amazed. Unfortunately, Jedi wasn't quite what we needed. Earlier, I mentioned full stack, and that's means that Anvil knows about everything from your database tables to your server-side code to your client-side code, and it's got to autocomplete all of them. What's more, it's web-based, and Jedi is expecting a file system, and when you're hitting the tab key, it's just not, not enough time to go back to the server and come back with completions. So we had to write it ourselves in JavaScript, which means, yes, here I am talking about my JavaScript project at a Python conference. Please save the rotten fruit until after the photos at the end. Uh, so, what do we do? Well, conveni it's conveniently, uh, if we run all your client-side code in Python in the browser, this means that we have a JavaScript parser for Python just lying around the place. We use the open source Sculpt project. Uh, so, we can take your code, replace wherever the cursor is with a random symbol, and then feed it to the Sculpt parser. And the pa Sculpt parser produces an abstract syntax tree that represents your module. We can then just recursively walk this tree and build up a representation of what's in scope at any given point in the code. Uh, we actually use JavaScript's prototypical inheritance for this, so inside scopes, like inside this function, prototypically inherit uh, all the names that are in scope from the outside scopes, like the module. And when we hit a name node that contains the cursor, we can just suggest all the things that are currently in scope. Uh, that's not the only thing we want to autocomplete. Uh, for example, uh, Anvil's database rows, you can access them like dictionaries with square brackets, so we have to store uh, you know, what items are available on each type. We also store, you know, we compute what you, can, what you get if you iterate it, what its attributes are, what you get if you call it as a function, and so on. Uh, speaking of function calls, we also want to be able to infer between modules. Uh, so, for example, uh, in Anvil, when you have server code, you write it in Python. When you have client code, you call it also from Python. And if you pass something into that server code, you kind of want to be able to autocomplete it inside that server function. And so what we do is, as well as saving the top-level scope from every module, so you can use it you know, in imports for autocompleting other modules, we also store every outbound call from a module. Uh, so we store this outbound call, uh, including server calls, to this server module when we parse the client code, and then when we're parsing the server code for autocomplete, we can just pull that type information for the arguments out and stick it into the local scope where it autocompletes. Uh, we can store a lot of information about types, which leads to a rather philosophical discussion of what exactly a type is. Uh, you could say, oh, well, it's just the Python class, but of course in Python it's very dynamic. You can dynamically add attributes to individual object instances, and I mean, even two dicts aren't actually the same type. Uh, so what we do is we say, actually, kind of sort of forget the Python class, we duck type our autocompleter. As far as we're concerned, these are two separate types and should be treated as such with separate item mappings. There's so much more I could talk about, but this is a short talk, so I'm going to leave it there. If you remember only one thing from this, make it this. Ladies and gentlemen of PyCon 2017, use autocomplete. Thank you very much.